this is one that you wanted to talk about, Rob, and I'm really, really excited for you to go on about this because you were saying <laughs> some really, really fun points. So Zach Krieger, who directed Barbarian, wrote which, and directed, wrote and directed Barbarian. excuse me, which you and Taylor loved. You guys would not stop talking about this movie. He had Remind me of my mom. No, I'm kidding. Oh, no. no, I'm just kidding. My oh, mom's nothing like that. I know that, enough about the that movie was for that to make joke. me so upset. Oh. Uh, my mom is nothing like that. Oh, golly. Spoiler alert. Well, talk to us about this whole auction for okay. his script. Okay, so here's here's what I love about this. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, uh, a guy named Zach Krieger, who is from a sketch comedy background, wrote and directed Barbarian. They shot the movie in Sofia, Bulgaria, where I have also made a film. Uh, they basically made it for four and a half million bucks. Um, one of the people behind that film was producer Roy Lee, who's somebody that I've I very much admired his career because Roy Lee had the foresight in the early aughts to recognize the fact that the Japanese, that well, the Asian industry was making some incredible, mostly it was J-horror, stuff like The Grudge, The Ring, um, Dark Water, um, the, the stuff that... Um, um, there was certain directors working. He also was able to acquire the rights to Infernal Affairs, which became The Departed. So for, for 10 years, Roy Lee did something that the rest of the industry didn't do, and he acquired all of these great horror properties. I mean, I still think that Gore Verbinski's The Ring is one of the great modern, uh, especially studio horror films. That Even from the opening scene, that movie works beautifully well, even though I also use it as an example of true gobbledygook, because... What is, what is what is Samara, a.k.a. Sadako, what, what, what are they I doing in the afterlife? You know, waiting until somebody watches their videotape. It's the best. The Ring is a fantastic film. Uh, so is The Departed, by the way. But so, you know, Roy Lee is now finding, I, I you know, people say, send me your scripts. I wish I could find the scripts that Roy Lee finds. But uh, because the man finds amazing material. And Barbarian's a piece of that. So based on the success, Barbarian made, I don't know the exact, on a $4.5 million spend, it made $45 million worldwide, something. It did very well. That's a hugely profitable film. So like what should happen in the industry, Zach Krieger has written another script that, by the way, I can't find anywhere because it's under lock and key. If anyone has weapons, hey, your boy, <laughs> send, send, send it to me. Uh, I want to read it. Script you want. I promise I won't send it to anybody else. I swear to God. But so he has his new project, Weapons. And Roy Lee is, again, a producer on Weapons. And they... There was a bidding war that broke out. Jordan Peele was interested in acquiring it. Didn't get it. Fired his management team. Not happy about that. Mm -hmm. But it was an old school filmmaker who did good, made a movie that made money, had a new script, a new project, and, and it was like piranhas in the water. They were salivating to get Zach Krieger's new project. They made a huge deal. I think the deal was $38 million, it says in the trades. 38 million, 38 million bucks for the budget of the movie and Zach's fee for writing and directing and probably producer's fees and all that. But still, guy makes a $4.5 million movie, makes, makes some money, and he sets up his next project after a bidding war, 38 million bucks at Warner Brothers. Kudos to you, Zach. Kudos, this baby. is This is the dream of young filmmakers That's everywhere. That's a high moment. And based, based on quality and based on a producer like Roy Lee who understands good material, and it's not just Roy Lee. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it, there are other, other people. But, but I think, you know, Roy Lee is a guy who's always had his nose to the grindstone. He has great taste, and he makes shit happen. And you know what? He pretty much, he had that script. He had Barbarian. He made it occur. And if you look at Barbarian, by the way, Kudos to the marketing department because they did look at the marketing of that film when they did like a fake, they made it look like it was a comedy movie. Did you see that, Taylor? Remember yeah, that? Yeah, that was a great trailer. They did a great mm -hmm. job. And to me, you know, I don't know why Roy Lee doesn't become the new Jason Blum and set up, probably doesn't want the aggravation because that'd be a pain in the ass. But I mean, it's very exciting to see this happen. And I, I, I think that more filmmakers, you know, everybody, don't look at Steven Spielberg as your model. Look at somebody like Zach Krieger mm -hmm. who starts small, writes a great innovative script, leverages that script so he can direct, has a vision, produces it on time and on budget, delivers something that is exciting for everybody, becomes successful, and is rewarded for that. To me, it is the quintessential way, and you find a producer that believes in you. And this, to me, is exactly where people who want to become filmmakers, this is the people that you should look to. So this is the blueprint, and do you think this is going to be the blueprint for what we're looking for in at least auteur filmmakers well, moving forward? The problem is, 
Uh, the reason I don't want you to send me your scripts is for every hundred, <laughs> 99 are, are, are terrible. Not yours. Yeah, yours I'm sure is, yours is the one. Yours is perfect. Yeah. But, but, but that, the other 99. The, so problem is, up your hopes. The, the problem is material. It's always been material. And not everyone can write. But I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I, I read a, a, another script recently. I can't say who or, who or what it was from. No, did you? Huh? Uh, but it was, uh, I have to say, it might have been tangentially related to somebody that we've been talking about, but man, was it good. And when you read a great script, everybody in Hollywood wants to read a great script. And when you read a great script, how many times have I said it? 7,800. Okay, good. It's a drinking game out there. You'll everybody, die, guys, don't play it. It's like watching, it's like being at a casting session. Every actor that comes in, you want them to knock it out of the park. Anybody that reads a script, you want it to be great. You, you do. do. And when you find something that's truly great to get it made, uh, I can't wait. I, I just am excited that we're going to get a great movie. That's all I want. Yeah. More great movies, more low budget horror that becomes theatrically viable. We live in a great time if you're a horror fan. Between Smile, between Barbarian, between Megan, mm -hmm. low budget horror is back, baby, and it it's really theatrically is. viable. And that's what we want. You know, and I, I have absolutely made it clear on this show that I am not a, a fan of horror, but it is really, really cool to watch these little engines that could, if you will, really, really thrive. They have these low budgets. They really do amazing stuff so often with practical effects, which is my favorite thing in the world. Yep. I mean, Taylor, do you think there's a reason why we all keep gravitating towards these kinds of horror movies? I feel like Rob, people like Rob and I have been from day one, and I'm so happy that it seems like now the mainstream audience is starting to see what's going on. Uh, another one, Terrifier 2, super Again, small Again, another indie. great example yeah. of a little engine that could... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, crowdfunded film where they really deliver the goods. Yeah, every time I blink right now, I hear the word script. Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm short-circuiting. I can't tell if you're saying it or not. Like, your mouth's not moving, but are you saying it still? But I am so proud of all the, you know, the small indie horror films. Uh, super proud of Roy Lee and Zach Krager, who, he's hilarious, by the way. Uh, my boyfriend David and I, we went to an advanced screening of Barbarian, and he did a Q&A after and I didn't know he came from a comedy background. Yeah, sketch comedy, was, like Jordan Peele did. He was hilarious during that Q&A because one of the things that came up was someone asked him if he realized when he came up with the name Barbarian that it was an anagram for Airbnb. And if you've seen the film, you know that it takes place at an Airbnb. And he was like, oh, no, I didn't know that. But now I should start taking credit for it. So I just thought he was just a really funny guy. I'm really proud of them. And this is just great news for me. Well, it's great to hear like Jason Blum and James Wan who are teaming up to make, you know, Atomic Monster and Blumhouse mm -hmm. coming together to make a new company. Because, I mean, you know, James Wan was a guy that had success, but he went back to his roots and he made the first Insidious for less than a million bucks. Knocked it out of the park. Yeah. You know, so, and by the way, James Gunn is the Hitchcock of the jump scare. He is the modern master of the jump scare. And I can't wait. Please, James Wan. I mean, I love Malignant, but come on, I want to see some, I want to see some more jump scares from you. And Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. I, that's what I want to see. That's the one I'm excited about. Can't wait. About. All right, but guys, what do you make out of this? Do you think that this is the blueprint that you should be following future filmmakers of the world? Are you excited about this? Do you think it's amazing that there was a bidding war for this indie horror kind of project or genre as a whole? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Masterclass. Masterclass offers classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class instructors at the very top of their fields. Each class is broken out into individual video lessons, usually around 10 minutes long. And Masterclass is completely accessible on your phone, the web, smart TV, and available via audio mode to listen to classes on the go. They have over 2,500 video lessons from over 180 of today's most brilliant minds. They're all available anytime, anywhere on iOS, Android, desktop, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. Now, obviously around here on the John Campus Show, we love our movies. So why not learn filmmaking from Jodie Foster or maybe directing from Ron Howard himself or the great Neil Gaiman doing his masterclass on the art of storytelling. And you guys have heard me talk about my favorite masterclass, Business Strategy and Leadership by Big Papa Iger himself, Bob Iger, the new and returning CEO of Disney. So guys, I highly recommend that you check it out. Get unlimited access to every class. And as a John Campia Show listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Just go to masterclass.com slash Campia now. That's masterclass.com slash Campia for 15% off Masterclass.